Hey there, it's Johnny here and welcome to another episode of the 3C Show and uh, this time I'm really excited to bring you someone who's doing some really amazing work. It's exciting, you know, and I've seen these photographs and I'm like, man, these are like so fresh and, and new and not something you you always see out there and uh, and Narelle is actually here with me today. Welcome, Narelle. Thank you very much, Johnny. It's lovely to have you, and it's so nice to see your smiling face there on the camera. I know you guys can't see that, but um, we're incognito today. It's all about the photography. So, but I can see Narelle's smiling face here on the on the in the software, which is just awesome. And Narelle is part of the my um, Team Three CX community, and it's just been awesome to see her growing in her photography over the last year or so. And uh, Narelle, tell us a little bit about yourself and how your passion for photography started. Um, well, I actually have had a camera since I was about 15. My uncle used to own a franchise of Camera House up in Queensland. And so he gave me my first camera, which was at the time an Olympus. But I was ne- but the photography then was only for holiday shots. Um, and it was only when two years ago that my I was doing palliative care for my mum. Um, and then she naturally passed away. And, and I decided I need a hobby. I need to do something for myself because I found that I had more free time. And so I decided to do um, photography. And so two years on, I'm taking actual proper photos. Yeah, <laughs> and I know wow. how to use the camera before a- I only knew turn it on to auto and point and shoot. Didn't know about composition, anything. Nothing came naturally to me. Yeah, it, it's definitely a challenge for everyone is getting used to that technical side and, and getting your skills to a place where you then can move on to the to the really creative part of photography that there's actually really fulfilling, you know, particularly when you start seeing amazing work like I've got here up on screen, like that, seeing that and you knowing that you've created that and you're putting aside all that technical stuff to get to that creative stuff, that is really when I think photography really kicks into its own you know yeah 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 oh that's amazing that's amazing so so at the moment you, what what's your main genre obviously you love birds and wildlife is there anything else you like to take photos of um i, I love flowers as well i really like um macro flowers and i do um i do a fair bit of that um yeah. And and I really want to get out and do some more nature uh, landscape photography. Lovely, which yeah. is why I'm going on holidays to the Southern Highlands because of the the beautiful open spaces and green pastures and and that that they offer down there. Yeah, it's just lovely down there. It's just amazing. I was I was recently down there on a shoot for work for national parks and just it's a beautiful bit of coastline and then you've got all these rainforest pockets and you know dry forests. It's, it's really mixed mountains and it's just just a great place. It's just a really yeah. wonderful place to visit. Oh, that should be a blast. Yeah, they've got Fitzroy Falls down there, which has a boardwalk mm. all the way to the um, to the waterfall. So I'm, I'm looking forward to getting down there first thing and hopefully taking some good shots. <laughs> yeah, amazing, amazing. Oh, well, you've got a few master classes you can always brush up on before you go in the community. Absolutely. <laughs> Little plug there. <laughs> yeah, awesome. Right, so let's talk about, like, let's talk about um, these photographs. You know, how, how did you... When did the high key thing first kick in? Because I, I absolutely love it. And what I love, what I love about these shots is that you've taken them from your backyard, and you, you know you will talk about your lens and that that you're using in a minute. But um, mm-hmm. I just I, I don't I don't know. I've never I don't I haven't seen anything like this before. They're almost like a painting with the high key look. And never alone that, what it does, you know, with the high key as well, it really minimizes the composition and just lets you focus on the subject. So how did you first stumble across, you know, uh, into the high key? Was it did you see someone else's photography, or you just happened to come across it one day? No, we I just we came across it with um, a graduate Facebook site that I'm in, um, but I really stumbled on this when it was a, a an overcast day, and mm. I was at the backyard and the birds had all flown off, and I spotted a couple in the next door neighbour's bush. Um, it's a gorilla tree, mm. and so I snuck around and I thought, thinking to myself, please don't fly away, and they <laughs> stayed up there. And then I noticed, you know, I did the metering um, and then I noticed when I looked at it, it was too dark. So I moved the metering down, um, visualising it through the back of the, the lens. Mm. And, um, 
and then I so I, I got it to where it looks from what you can see on the image now, and I thought I love that. Yeah, I it's... just I love it for exactly what you said—the simplicity, the slight painting feel that it has about it. Um, and yeah, it just is. It's more intimate to me. Yeah, it sure is. It, it's it's beautiful. It just really minimizes any distractions around the main subject and that's what i love about it and it i don't know and it like i keep i keep referring back to almost like this painterly look in the photos this is like they've been drawn almost like the detail is just absolutely beautiful in some of these photographs so i'll just yeah, um click through you. some of these while we're talking about it and, and actually actually funny you know like I, I mentioned i went to the south coast uh oh. last week or the week before anyway and on the wall you wouldn't believe it guess what was on the wall they had purchased wow these prints and they were high key wildlife images so there was one of a koala and there was several of different birds and kangaroos and things like that so yeah it's just um and that's my partner sending me a text there on the screen. Um, it was it has actually made me think exactly of the work you're doing. And they they had a few where they had even more negative space, white space around it, which I thought uh-huh. was kind of interesting as well. So it was exactly like this, you know, and big prints. And some of them were actually even black and white. Um, so it was, yeah, it, I just saw those and I was like, oh, that's exactly what narelle has been doing. That's yeah. amazing. So I reckon these would make a great print on a wall, like a big print on a wall yeah. as well. Oh, this Friday I'm picking them up from the framing shop. Wow. And uh, I hope they will look okay. Um, but I'm getting getting them framed properly and I'm having a white card around them and with the white frame. And I'm putting there's about nine photographs, some flower macro flowers as well. Wow. Um, and I'll put them up on my wall and with the fingers crossed they'll look great. Oh, you'll have to share a photo of them hung hung on your wall. Yeah, I'd love to see that. Yeah. And I, I actually love the the fact you've gone with white on white because it just not it gives it, you know, that shadow of the edge of the, the mat and the frame, but it's, mm. the frame isn't going to overpower the subject, you know, and that's the whole idea, right? Like you've got this white background where the subject um, pops out. If you have put a black frame on or something, it's going to sort of overpower that 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 softness yeah, that you're going for. So I'm yeah, really I, interested to see what they look like. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, me too. I'm just so, yeah, I didn't want anything to distract from the actual bird um, yes. either. So that's why I went with, with that. The um, the shop assistant actually asked some of the customers there about the frame colour because she liked a, a softer, um, cheeky wood colour. Okay. Um, and then I thought, no, nah, because that's just going to distract from the from the photo itself. So, yeah. Yeah, for sure. I totally agree. And I think that's the beauty of these photos as well. You know, say you did want to mix it up, you could go with something that matches your decor. Like they're very flexible images that you've, you know, that's not like an overpowering warm and magenta blue tones like you would have in a sunrise or something you like that. It's like yeah. the, the whiteness gives you that flexibility um, to do a lot with it in print, which I think is really cool. Mm. Yeah, awesome. All right. So tell me, what are you what are you photographing these with? What 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 are your tools of your trade at the moment that you use? Tools of my trade is my <laughs> very old Canon twelve hundred D crop sensor camera. So mm-hmm. who's <laughs> you don't have to have anything no. um, brand new if you don't Certainly want to. Don't. Um, I was thinking of upgrading, but I'm not happy. There's the, with the um, the ninety D and the Canon. Um, mm-hmm. There's a lot of chatter about it not handling low light situations very well. Right. So I thought, no, I'll just keep with what I've got. Um, and and I use a, I was it in the Black Friday sales last year, I bought a um, Canon L series lens, which mm. are the the Mickey Mouse, um, yep. the Rolls Royce of the, of the, the lenses. Yes. So them, and it's a 100 to 400 millimeter um, f stop 4.5 to 5.6. Um, and it's got the inbuilt image stabilization. Beautiful, yeah. Um, and, and so all of these shots are all handheld. 
which is just awesome. It means you can yeah. run and gun and get your shots. So, and at 400 yeah. mil, you're getting equivalent to 600 mil on your quad body. So you're getting That's right correct. in there, nice and tight. And I think this is just, this just proves that, you know, it's not about the gear and um, obviously your glass is. is you got to have good yeah, glass. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. It can be really important. But um, yeah, and, and this proves that you don't need the latest and greatest camera. And I mean, or autofocus system for that matter. You're nailing these um, shots handheld. Yeah, this is all manual. I know. It's just awesome. Love it. So, so you do shoot in manual, are you? Just setting yes, your yes. exposure to, to – it looks like it's probably a one to two stops overexposed, I would say, is probably what it's you're setting about it. Two, yeah, about two, two stops. stops. Yeah, yep. yeah. So that's just awesome. So yeah, it just shows you, the, you know, the glass. And that that bit of glass you brought now, like that, that'll last you probably – you know, I, I got a mate who a long time. I hope <laughs> it lasts a very, very long time. As long as you don't change your mount, obviously. But um, no, there's no. there's a local guy here, Brent Mayle, that I've known for years, and um, he has he's used the same. I think it's a seventy to two hundred f four for fifteen years. He's had it for now. Yeah, the same yep. Canon lens, and oh, um, and, and he shot all these studio shots with it. It uses it for all his landscapes, and uh, it's just it's still going. You know, mind you, yeah. it looks looks beaten and worn because it is a tool, but um, it's it's yeah. still going. So it just proves, you know, you buy buy good glass, and it'll outlast probably your f- photography career. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, you want, I mean, it's so expensive. It is. <laughs> I mean, mm. that lens was $3,000 and I got it for $500 discount wow. with the Black Friday sales. Yeah. Yeah, that's Australian uh, too, guys. So if you want yeah, why yeah, we pay so much, we're Australian. So, we, yeah, a little bit cheaper in the US, obviously. So. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and, yeah, so I was going to buy a wide-angle lens um, for landscape, mm. but they're three and a half thousand, and they didn't have a sale on those this year, so I mm. didn't buy it. <laughs> yeah, that's fair enough. That's a fair fair bit of money, isn't it? It's outlay. a lot of money for it an is. amateur. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. But then again, you know, if you if you're on a system and you're going to stay with that system, then it's you know you can imagine how much joy like you're starting to get out of that lens now. And it's been twelve months, and yeah, yeah, and now because we just had Black Friday, didn't we? So and 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 now you're you know producing these images that are just 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 incredible, really, really. Much marvelous all of it and um with your processing because i know you're using something a little different for you, for your post processing yeah, tell photo. us about yeah so oh, infinity photo okay tell us a little yeah. bit about that and um well infinity photo they affinity um which is a serif product um they have three programs which um or you can open up stuff or in between them and shift between them um and so because of my business i use that suite of products Yes. You only pay a one-off fee for them and, and that's it. And they're fully supported every time there's an up, upgrade. You don't pay for anything. So awesome. from a business point of view, that's how I've ended up with Affinity. Mm. Um, and the processing is that, I mean, I am not too smart on the old <laughs> software programs as far as that's concerned, but um, they're easy to learn. Yeah, that's that's great. And, and, and the lingo is very, very similar to Lightroom and Photoshop. Yes, that's right. And but you're not paying an ongoing subscription, which is really, really nice. And you, that's you know, I mean, correct. I mean, your results speak for themselves, you know. And that, and that's the thing. Again, like, you know, sometimes if 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 you can't afford something that's the latest and greatest, even with cameras, I mean, you're still with your software, you've chosen something that's obviously doing a great job and it's well supported and you know it really well. And and sometimes that's that's often the way to go. You know, if 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 you need to save money or if it's the software that you know or integrates in something else that you already have so yeah I mean, yeah mm, there's lots of options out there now for sure and this is just it proof. is yeah mm. and so if i mean they are chasing after um after the photoshop but like room business so yeah that's why so. they've they've made it similar to that yeah yeah for sure so sure. it's easier for people to jump across to that if they wish to. Mm. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Very good, very good. And uh, what, what's, what's? And I, think, you know, like, I keep thinking, like, I can't believe you took these in your backyard. I, just, like, I know it's amazing. Uh, Do you know, uh, um, every time in in Australia, there's a company called BirdLife Australia. Yes. And in October, we they held a national bird count right across Australia, and mm. I took part of that. And counting the birds in my backyard, I get six out of the top ten birds in Australia. That's incredible. So I really am quite fortunate. 
Yeah. And I just live in suburbia. I don't live out in property. That's it. And and, and that's a, this this is the other thing as well. Like, you know, I mean, we do have amazing bird life in Australia and it does, you know, you tend to be, you know, you can get access to that just about anywhere. We are pretty privileged like that when it comes to bird life. But again, this is another, it, to me, it just says like, you don't have to go on this epic journey overseas or to this epic location and spend loads of money to create amazing photographs, you know. We're using a little bit of creativity and the tools you have. I mean, you can come home with some um, amazing images right in your own backyard. You know, like yeah. some of the macro photos that I've seen people take from their from their own garden or <sighs> the next door neighbor's garden. You know, like there's so many options to you. And again, it it come it plays back to that. Like once you once you get to a place where you're not stressing about the settings and you're not stressing about um you know the technical stuff all the time it just gets down to pure creativity and you can create yeah. amazing photographs just about anywhere and that's yeah. you know with the tools you have which i, I really yeah. love that that's what i love about your story it's it's just great and i love natural light i've done i've bought flowers and i've done photography of some flowers um mm. creative macro of them um inside and i i just prefer to take them outside Yes, right. So, you know, when I've bought a bunch of flowers, I've taken the flower outside mm. um, and used a, a clamp thingy and um, and created the macro outside in natural light. I just prefer it so much better. Yeah, right. And is it because – is it just simply because the light is more – even or soft or what is it just more pleasing more pleasing to you yeah it's yeah yeah, it's more pleasing to me it's softer i mean Mm. obviously you do it first thing in the morning or last thing in the as the sun goes down to get that um but yeah it's just more pleasing to me i just find the artificial light too artificial Mm. yeah fair enough yeah yeah, that, that to- makes total sense. Total sense. Well, that's awesome. Is there anything else, any tips, anything else you want to talk about with your photos? Anything um, else you want to mention? Because we've sort of covered the story now. I, I actually, you know what we should talk about at some stage is this Christmas card you had printed. Oh, yeah. Yeah, before we, before we get on to wrapping up for sure. <laughs> I've never done this before. And, mm. and I thought to myself, well, the rainbow lorikeet is full of Christmas colours, so yes. why not create my own Christmas card instead of buying them this year? So that's what I did. Yeah, I think I think that's an amazing idea. And I, I, as soon as I saw these, I, I thought as soon as I saw these, I thought, oh, these would be amazing on a set of cards, you know, um, to be sold. I mean, even if you know, even if you wanted to, and this is what I, it always makes me excited is like seeing things like this where you could create a little set of cards and even to sell them, like you know, in the future, like it, these photographs, they just lend themselves to something like this, you know, and they're, they and they're purely, yeah, just it's just great. And I love things like this and 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 little ideas where. You know, the, there are the possibilities. I know you didn't do this to sell it. I know you did this for personal use, but it's just an yeah. example of something like. And in the end, you're not you're not looking to make enough money to to you know retire with with these sort of things. It's just like you sell a few to your friends and you sell a few to family, and, and you get a little bit of money to 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 help with your photography gear or whatever it is you need help with. And and you've created something amazing, which I, I love these things. And I, I, what a what yeah. a perfect gift, you know. It's one of your photographs on a card that you get to send to your friends. I just love that. Yeah, and my personal message inside, um, yes, yeah, it's just, yeah, it is it's much nicer. Yeah. From from this photograph, my sister who lives in America, she asked me if I'd print a card up for her oh, um, and go. send it over to her. So I did that separately. I didn't put my name and Merry Christmas yeah. or anything on it because I know she likes, um, she still writes thank you cards and that type of thing. Yeah. Um, so I had some of those printed off. Um and sent them over to her. So hopefully in two weeks she'll receive them and be very happy. That's amazing. Yeah, that's so good. Now, what a nice, what a nice gift to give people to. You know, like if you give them a little present and you've got one of your personalized cards on it, or just mail them a card. Like there's something 
something i don't know really nice about receiving something in the mail and then someone's gone to the trouble and they've created a card and then they've handwritten in it there's something really nice about that and something really that we've lost a lot in the digital age you know yes we have lost Mm. a lot of that personal touch in the digital age yeah yeah. although let's just keep in touch with people yes um, more easily um, and more often but yeah that personal relationship has kind of lost a bit Mm. yeah it can and i think this just helps with that personal personal touch that's amazing absolutely love it love it now did you have any other tips or anything else you wanted to mention uh, um, about the photos? no i just you know for me it's i see something and and it strikes it a, a passion in me mm-hmm. so for me photography is about recreating nature which makes me extremely happy it always puts a smile on my face so I only ever take photographs of things that make me feel happy. Mm. Yeah, exactly. And it's funny. It's funny, you know. Like, uh, and and that and this gets to that place where, you know, you might hear me talk about it sometimes about like feeling the scene or feeling the moment that you're in. And once you get past yes. that, past that place where, you know, you're not thinking about the technical things, you're not thinking about what setting. All that becomes natural, and then you're just purely concentrating on, you know, the the capture and the creativity part of that. And and that makes you happy. So every time you see a photograph, you know, you don't think about what blow Joe next door said over the fence of you or whatever. You just think about how you felt when you took that photograph. And it's super important, you know, to to get yourself to that place, I think, um, yeah. with your photography. And me, yeah. Mm. And for me to see this, I mean, it just continually makes me happy. Yeah, exactly. And every time I look at these, it, it does the same thing for me too, you know. But I've spoken Excellent. to you, spoken to you obviously a few times and I know how excited about these photographs you are. So that, that helps too. But I see these and I'm like, oh, wow, these are just awesome. I, I, I love them. Yeah, it's really good. So well done with these. It's just, Thank you. just crackers. Absolutely love it. Oh, that's <laughs> awesome. Well... Uh, we I have to have to get off here soon and, and get ready to record uh, this month's um, uh, assignment for the Team Three CX community. So that that's coming up, and uh, actually I'll, I'll have a chat to you about that before we before we jump off a bit later. But um, is there anything else you want to add? Uh, where can people find you? Where's the best place? Are you, is it Instagram or where? What's going um, on? Yep, I'm on Instagram, so it's just at Narelle Loader. Um, nice. And yeah, I, I don't put. I'm not on it every single day, but That's I do put up um, posts every now and again. Um, so hopefully I try to capture – I do a lot of birds, as you know, um, but I try to capture a different look on the bird. So, yeah, it's not the same image. You might think it looks similar, but the bird, the look in the bird. Um, Actually, I've got one bird here that's got a um, – the the noisy miner their tongue is yellow and it looks exactly like its beak (laughs) and it's not so i've got two photos there and it's not until you actually look closer that you see the tongue and a little bit of bread that it's eaten and you think oh my goodness i've never seen a tongue that's yellow and looks exactly like its beak (laughs) yeah for sure so i'm just going to import you know what i didn't get this one image and it's a close-up of um oh that intimate one where that one's let me import that quickly i don't know why i didn't have that one i really like this one so let's bring this up yeah i love this and i mean the glare is that same sort of feeling oh sorry it's a bit low res guys sorry about that but it, oh, it's loading slowly. Anyway, I'll just zoom out. Anyway, you get a bit of an idea. But um, you can see this one is it's the, this is exactly what you were speaking about. It's that that feeling of something uh, a little bit different that you wouldn't normally capture that moment. And I love how you've punched in on this one, and you've got that little moment of, and it works perfect in that square crop too. I think that works really well. It's just something a little bit different. You know, I, I love the yeah. bird shots too, where they're sitting up on the grevillea, and they're great. But these intimate moments where, and this is where you know your creativity is starting to come out because it's not just a bird shot sitting there doing something. You know, like it, it's a, it's a little moment you've it's, captured yeah. something a little bit different that you don't normally see, and I love that. I think. That's, yeah, yeah. That's, that's, I mean, that's the thing. I mean, you know, I'll sit yeah. outside for quite some time and just I take so many photographs. Yep. Um, but it's, it's been there for the whole time so that the birds mm. relax mm. around you and then they just do whatever they do and you get the opportunity to see one of these um different shots one of those different moments in a little bird's life yeah that's great and it and that's and that it really is the key you know giving yourself time to slow down just you know 
and and like you said the birds get used to you but slow down and just feel the scene and just take your time with the shot and like you know you may be out there for half an hour or an hour and you may come home with one or two photographs that are absolutely the ones where you've caught that little intimate moment that's something a little bit different from the bird just sitting there and and that makes yeah. it all worth it you know that makes the whole <laughs> the time and, and never mind that it's a, you know who, who doesn't like chilling out watching birds or being in nature i mean that's just the greatest feeling right <laughs> i know and you know we've got about 20 galahs in our backyard now um <laughs> nice we started out with two and then they've all come around and now all the babies are coming oh wow that's cool <laughs> <laughs> and the babies are so cute because yeah. their tummies are all are all gray so yeah. as they mature their tummy feathers become pink pink yeah that is cool yeah, it's yeah. sweet. It's really lovely. <laughs> no, I can't wait to see the photographs of those. They'll be awesome. So <laughs> There's one on my Instagram page. <laughs> oh, cool. There you go. You have to go check it out at Narelle Loder. N E R R E L L L O. No, no. No double L. N E R R E L. L O A D E R. So it is technically a double L, but not a triple L. It's not a triple L. <laughs> oh, there you go perfect it's all good i'll put a link below this video anyway so that's fine people will come and find out more and of course if you're part of the team 36 community please uh, you know uh jump into share a photo and ask the real questions there if you've got any more and i'll also post the video in there for the community and uh if you're interested in finding out more about the team 3x team team 3cx community the landscape and photography community where we're in there helping each other in a photography journey together uh, please send me an email at help at three colors.co h-e-l-p at t-h-r-e-e c-o-l-o-u-r-s dot co that's actually it's l-o-r dot co anyway there'll be a link i always spell i spell it the american way in the url and i think ever since then i've spelled it the, the australian way and I, I don't know anyway it's all good norel it's all good isn't it <laughs> <laughs> we have fun it's all good it's all about having fun isn't it <laughs> yep absolutely that's it you can't that's take life about. you can't you can't take it too seriously and and honestly just i just i just love love seeing stories like yours in the community because it's just so ins inspiring to me you know seeing you capture these amazing photographs and growing on your photo journey so that's awesome thank you yeah well done well done well thanks for your time today i really appreciate it more than welcome thank and, you and uh as always guys you know uh, head over to threecolors.co and uh yeah with this video i'll be over there with many others and i'll also put this out as a podcast and uh, link back to the video so you can see the photographs and uh yeah that's it for this one we're out of here aren't we yep absolutely <laughs> <laughs> see you next time thanks Enjoy your day. bye guys bye bye